Alright, thank you, uh, Representative Ballantyne, for meeting me on such short notice. Uh, we're going to discuss a uh, few things about the budget cuts that were just passed this week. Okay. And uh, the first question I have for you is, uh, how do you feel, uh, in general, about the budget cuts? Uh, geez, uh, Jonathan, I don't think anybody feels good about it. Um, you know, there were actually, you know, we, we say there were some winners out of it, but really nobody won. Um, it, that's some of the toughest things. First time since I've been here that we have been short money. Um, so it was a new experience for me and anybody who's been here only four years. Uh, I was pleased uh, that we, we took the route that, that the governor suggested and that I thought we should do all along, and that was to make targeted cuts. Uh, you know, earlier on, Budget Control Board had, had just done basically 3% across the board. And that really, quite honestly, takes us out of the equation there. It just kind of says, hey, everybody takes 3%. And what we're chosen to do, I mean, if we're going to, uh, select winners, if you will, when we're doling out money in the budget, then we need to go back and pick the losers, if you will. I think that's just accountability, responsibility. Um, there were some departments, obviously education was spared. Uh, they still lost a lot of money. I mean, let's be clear about that. But compared to some other uh, some other agencies, you know, uh, cuts range from 3% to 15%. Um, and it's tough times. And I, unfortunately, I, I don't know when it's going to get much better. I hate to be gloom and doom. I'm more of a half full kind of guy. Uh, but it, it was a tough time. Um, we did kind of get in and out rather quickly. Um, the train was kind of rolling. The plan was in place. There were really no amendments. There were, there were some amendments offered, none that really passed other than the one from uh, the chairman of Ways and Means at the end to kind of sum it all up. But uh, that's part of the process, unfortunately. Um, you know, uh, you got some people that, a small group of people actually make a bunch of decisions for the state. And uh, when a plan's in place, it's tough to change it. So. All right. And uh, is there any one thing that you would like to have changed about the budget, like add an amendment or anything like that? You know, yeah, oh yeah. I mean, I would have liked to um, to to see some changes. What it's unfortunate. It, unfortunately, it's it's how the system is, and uh, right or wrong. And I think a lot of times it, it, it's wrong. Uh, you know, really, there was only a select hand few of people that that negotiated the whole budget deal, and and that's just how the system is. You've got to have a group of 124 House members approve something that has to then go over to 46 senators that then has to go over to one governor. And, uh, you know, I, I can understand the argument uh, that would say, hey, here's the plan that everybody agreed on, nobody change it. I can understand that. I don't like that. And that kind of uh, neuters basically everybody who wasn't involved in that process. Uh, you know, there was a, rep, uh, a representative, James Smith, you know, from the other side of the aisle. He's a Democrat, proposed what I thought was an outstanding amendment that would just say, hey, we're going to base our budgets in the future uh, off of what the revenues were for the previous year. That's how people do their checkbooks back home. That's common sense, and that failed. I mean, I think only I don't know, 15, 20 Republicans supported it. Um, that was one I supported. Um, shortening the legislative session was another one I supported. Um, now, to be fair to my House members and colleagues, we have actually passed a shortened session bill uh, before, for whatever reason, it just doesn't get out of the Senate. But um, I would have liked it to be a more deliberative process. Um, unfortunately, we're under a deadline. Um, and this is something that I don't know if your viewers are aware of, and this is something um, that, that was important for the people like myself who were complaining that we would have liked to have seen some amendments and have some more discussion, is we were under a time constraint. If this, if it didn't move like it did, we had very little wiggle room because if it not, had not passed in this manner, then the default would have been, it goes back to what the Budget and Control Board recommended, which was across the board cuts. And as I started a few minutes ago, and as others have agreed, we don't want to do across the board cuts. So if that's the case, if we're going to go targeted cuts, we got to get this train on out, out of the station. Um, so it's kind of a catch-22. I mean, it's, it's always a, a something in politics. All right. And um, the, uh, the budget that has passed, uh, do you see anything in particular that governor might veto? And if he does, will, do you think the House will just overturn that? You know, I, b believe it or not, I know, uh, the, you know I've been traveling with the governor a good bit here lately. Uh, believe it or not, I have not talked with them uh, specifically about what they may or may not do. Um, just in general, his beliefs in government and some of the things um, – you know, I don't think uh, he's probably going to like the fact that uh, we told some people to agencies, here you go, you, know, you need to make these cuts, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but at the same time, we told some people, hey, you cannot touch Project A, Project B, Project C. Those are, in essence, sacred cows, if you will. Um, you know, whether, it's, whether the House and the Senate agree that those are priorities or not, I just don't think the way the governor believes those agencies should work. They ought to be able to get, be, have the flexibility to say they can, re, they can look at everything and not just be told from us, people outside the agency, that, hey, you, these are off limits. So I would think we'd probably see something there. Um, I don't know. I don't think it'd be many vetoes, um, certainly. Uh, we'll come back next Friday, a week from today, Halloween, 
uh, I'm sure the politicos, anybody, I feel, I feel for my colleagues who have races right now because I can tell you, I know a consultant's going to drop some piece, you know, sure enough, you know, trick or treat or Halloween or nightmare or something like that. But uh, uh, we'll be coming back for vetoes on that day. All right. And just an overall question, kind of sum up everything. Uh, how do you uh, see that these budget cuts will affect the everyday uh, South Carolinian? You know, that's, that's a great question because a lot of times we get over here in Columbia and we forget about that. Uh, you know, we, you know, Fort Side right here outside of Columbia and Irmo, um, but a lot of people come from other parts of the state and they kind of forget what's it going to do back home. Um, you know, agencies are going to have to cut. I, I'll tell you a prime example that I was, I, I felt bad, I was, I was embarrassed. Uh, I was, you know, in and out of the block building even when we're not in session a good bit. And I had met one of the new sergeant at arms who was working for us, young guy just right out of the academy. And I said, hey, good to meet you, so forth. And that was a couple days ago. And then yesterday I was back in here. And I saw him again. I said, hey, good to see you again. And he said, well, Mr. Valentine, I'm not going to be here next week. And I said, really, what's happening? He said, well, because of cuts, I'm no longer going to be around in the, on the house. So that, I mean, that shows you that one, I mean, that's a, that's a cut that we're taking here. So I don't want people to think that the House and the Senate are not immune. Um, but that was the first time it kind of really hit me. Okay, wow, that's what we're going to see here. I've also talked with, with other House uh, uh, staff. And they've told me that we're going to be short staff next year ourselves here. And, you know, if you're seeing it here, you're going to be seeing it in other agencies. You're going to probably see more wait times. Um, I've noticed that I, I, the paper, I kind of take bits and pieces of it between running around with, with my wife and our three, three children. Um, I do find time to read the paper. I think some agencies are going to have to, you know, instead of their office hours being 9 to 5 kind of thing, you might see some, you know, 10 to 4, 10 to 3. You won't see things open on weekends and stuff like that. So, um we're doing it at home. Everybody is, with the way the national economy is doing right now. Everybody's kind of pulling that belt a little bit tighter. Um, but you're going to we're going to be inconvenienced. If I had to sum it up, you're going to be inconvenienced for a little while. Um, and I'm just hoping when we come back to do the budget for next year that uh, hopefully uh, hopefully it'll be better. But I don't know, Jonathan. All right. All right. Well, thank you once again for taking the time uh, to do this interview, and uh, we look forward to hearing from you uh, next session. All right. Thanks for what you're doing out there on the on the web. All right.